Good morning, everybody. This is the British Library's Startup Day. Very warm welcome to Breakout Room um, 2. It is Thursday, the 19th of November, 2020, and I have great pleasure in introducing you to Craig Carr. Craig Carr set up and is the Managing Director of Fairburn Heating Solutions. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Craig. It's in its 15th year of trading, and he's joining us from, is it true, Slovakia? You're in Slovakia? Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, he's wise that he believes industrial and process heating systems should never be the cause of downtime and his team throw their hearts into their work, whether they're maintaining a system, which is always their recommended practice, or reacting fast to a breakdown or a piece of equipment, which is uh, critical to a business process. They supply, install, and commission these massive uh, process heating plants in industrial plants. And he's trusted by some of the biggest names in business like um, Honda, Jaguar Land Rover, uh, Tyrrells, Crisps, and they've never lost a blue chip client. That's one of their their um, their claims uh, to fame. And a rigorous reliability is um, the keystone of their uh, service. Welcome, Craig. Thank you. Good good afternoon, mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> not true, is it? Yeah, what in Slovakia. Yeah, yeah, in Slovakia. It is. Oh, in Slovakia, obviously, you have an hour ahead of that. You are. I'm sorry. It's still morning coffee here. <laughs> anyway, settle in, every, settle in, everybody. This is just going to be, um, this is a result of um, the wonderful Anita Kiss at the Hive in Worcester and uh, BIPC in uh, Worcestershire Libraries that we've started this business book club. You're welcome to come any Saturday, the last Saturday of um, each month. But the reason why uh, we're doing this is because, um, thank you very much to the British Library to inviting us to do this, as to share the, the three thrills and spills. What are the thrills and spills of... Can you still hear me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Right. Why has that gone off? My screen's just gone. Sorry, guys. As long as you can hear me, Craig, that's all that, that matters. Um, the thrills and spills. I'm just thinking, why is my screen decaying? Um, the thrills and spills of business. So first of all, Craig, can you tell us what are the thrills? Why do you love doing what you're doing? Um, I just love the, it's, it's nice to have the flexibility to help people. Um, and what I've found over the years, as we've grown slightly, we get, we, when we're involved in these, these big corporations, the, the big cog seems really difficult to move and there's a lot of hoops that they have to jump through and there's, there's just no flexibility to help people and I see their staff getting more and more frustrated by not being able to because they're good, good people and, and they just have to go through so many different areas and processes to get to, to, to give customer satisfaction it's it, to just do it yourself so you've got the overriding say and you can make quick decisions and you can help people out just it's nice to be the, the hero isn't it you know I guess and you know when people want you to, and, and just see you know see the positivity and, and, and turn around bad situations into good uh, now you're speak. sorry to, you're hearing me aren't you yeah absolutely yeah now why can't um i'm just getting a message that um others can't but i'm just hoping um people can hear oh no we are we're we're good to go exactly. sorry about that craig so yes were you saying then as i was slightly distracted that oh. um it's the flexibility you love having your own business because of the flexibility yeah, just being able to to actually make the quick decisions and, and how, you know, the book stops with me. So if somebody needs something, whenever it may be, you know, Saturday night, Sunday night, and they can't get hold of certain other companies. And, you know, so and, and those companies then start to rely on us because we have the capability to say, yeah, we'll come and do that. And we'll be there now. And we'll, you know, so mm -hmm. just turning all these, you know, these people that are sometimes in desperation that they're losing thousands or tens of thousands of pounds an hour. And you can go, yeah, we are coming in and we know what we're going to do. We're going to fix it and just... Just to be the hero for them, it's, it's great, isn't it? Is that is that it? Is that what turns you on? <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Well, I, I, started the, I started the business because I don't really deal that well with authority, never have. Um, you know, um, didn't want to, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't mind conforming, but I'd rather not, if, if you know what I mean. So, and just do things my own way. Um, I was young enough and silly enough, I think, at 24, that I thought if this goes wrong, then you know, I'll, I'll just go and get a job. So how easy that would have been, I don't know. But, you know, I haven't really looked back. It's just sort of grown and 
there's there's been times of worry there's been depressions and you know there's pandemic if somebody said to me you know start a company up and go through a, a global recession and a, and a pandemic and, and brexit then <laughs> i'd have said wow well, yeah i didn't realize i'd have to deal with all of that but you, you get through all these things you know it's a, a day by day process and as long as you're in control and, and you're doing what you want to do to um to you know at, at, at best that you can do it then yeah you've just got to get out of bed in the morning haven't you and go to work so. would you recommend would you recommend that craig would you say it's good to start early um i think if you've 24 got less, 24 is pretty early isn't it i think if you've got less commitments then it makes it an easy decision and and sometimes i think going into business with somebody else can it obviously it has its but there was another two directors that i went into business with when i was 24 but you also you have those two other peers that are sort of you know keen to go in the same direction as you that also makes your decision making easy um both of those directors are now retired now um and Funnily enough, I've just finished paying the one off this month. So I've last the last three year buyout. So it is 100%. Congratulations. It's all got, yours. I have my little bottle of uh, Slovakian bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> that is something to celebrate. Do you feel differently about the business now that it's all yours? Because Mark McCormack, who wrote um, what they didn't teach you at the Harvard Business School, which was a massive bestseller way back when. But he says, if you can do it on your own, do it on your own. How differently do you feel about the business now that it's all yours as opposed to that shared responsibility with others? Um, yeah, I feel, I feel good about it. Um, I've learned to bring, um, you know, not to expand too quickly, not to, you know, not to go after um, the, you know, get, don't, you know, obviously to, all people always say, you know, the turnover is the vanity and, and pushing through and growing is hard. And sometimes you've just got to go, do you know what? It's okay to just nibble a bit each year and stay profitable um, rather than take the next level of risk too quickly. So yeah, you know, start up early, but don't try and run, too quickly is probably what I would say. Um, I love that expression. Turnover is vanity. Profit yeah. is uh, sanity. But I, I, I like to add cash is reality yeah. <laughs> because you can only Theo Pathetis says that, doesn't he, on Dragon's Den? He says yeah. you can make losses month after month, but you only run out of money once. Yeah, that's absolutely so, true. But you're, you're feeling quite comfortable. Sorry, say, say again, Craig. And cash is king. My dad, my, one of the things my dad always said to me is cash is king. Businesses do not fail for lack of orders. They fail from lack of cash. So, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So, so let's go through the, those spills. You love being a hero. And that brings to mind that FedEx story of when the conveyor belt goes down and um, they're worried about, you know, the world on time and whatever. And they, the service manager tries to fix it. He can't. And then the service director gets involved. And he says, no, I can't. But I know a man who can. And he makes that phone call. And this guy comes in with a tiny toolbox and he spends about half an hour looking around the conveyor belt and he can't find what's wrong with it. And they're pressurizing him. He says, no, no, I've just got to work through this methodically. And then eventually he reaches into his toolbox. He gets out the tool, uh, the screwdriver, and he turns one screw and the whole thing starts going again. And this service director says, oh, wow, mate, I'm so grateful to you. How much do I owe you? He says, that would be $10,000. He says, wow, that's a lot of money, you know, for turning one screw. And he said, uh, could I have an itemized bill for that? And so he gets his pad out and he says, for turning of one screw, $1. For knowing which screw to turn, 9999 <laughs> And I suppose I'm not suggesting that you're the, the 10000 if you call me out it's a 10,000 job or whatever but are you this is it it's that feeling of being able to go into a situation where lots of other people are struggling like like you were describing in your job yesterday you got to a point where was it 240 volt and you had to make it talk to a 120 it's volt a fundamental errors that yeah on the site it was but you you know everyone's sort of scratching their brains and then it's a case of a bit of well we didn't we didn't expect that you expect it a bit of blame culture goes on and then it's well who's you know and then it's who's going to pay for this and then the reality starts to set in and you know we, we we come to a, a common ground well actually it was the, the other manufacturer that spec the wrong voltage and built the panel wrong so um so, so we, what have you learned about I, diplomacy as a result of that having to sort out these warring factions you can only give the guys the facts can't you and say look you know the, the people who have, have who have dealt with this contract summary are the ones that need to decide what's happened and we need to get back to get to the facts and find out what's gone on and we'll do what we can our end and we'll have a collective mm -hmm. on site of how to get this uh, resolve whilst we're here in, in Slovakia and then um, you know whatever needs to be tied up at the end gets tied up at the end but the, the main thing is without diving too deep into you know if you're going into areas where you need additional purchase order cover and things like that you've got to be careful but to be as helpful as you can without you know commercial being commercially sensible. 
You know. How do you feel about, you've obviously got the technical skills that you understand it from the, the, the ground up, but the managerial and the leadership skills of leading a team. How many are in your team now, Craig? Uh, there's eight of us. There were 13. Um, yeah, and now you're eight. Now we're eight. Um, it, we, were, we had a year which we didn't lose money, but we didn't make as much money as we had made. I think there was a little bit of Brexit uncertainty in sort of Q4 of last year. Uh, we reached our... our best ever year I think in the back end of 2018 uh, got the business up to 1.3 million um, the the bottom line profit was good uh, and then we sort of dropped off by 30 percent the following year we still I was still heavily invested into trainees because I wanted to do things differently to the other companies that I know who are bringing in subcontractors all the time but uh, one of the things that I really prided myself on is I'd never made anybody redundant and I, and I didn't you know want to make people redundant but we, we didn't make necessarily make people redundant um because of the drop off in cash it was sort of like we we do have to change this business model you know but it wasn't purely for the for cash reasons if you know what i mean i could see the people that were on board weren't necessarily the right people so you need to sort of exit them from the business but in a, in a fair manner yeah so, but i love this sorry to talk about <clears throat> people losing their jobs and saying i love that because it was because they weren't aligned with your values were they in your vision mission and values yeah it's it's difficult they, they say you know saying they are and uh, the vision mission and values thing i think is is a good basis to sort of obviously copy certain parts of, of big corporate areas but when you're a small business you can you can do that vision and, and mission things just by having a small team and knowing that you're having regular communications and you know you're on the right page with each other and you know you've got the right people in the difficulty is when that the first time that you think this person isn't right for us and you have to make that decision uh, and you and it does personally affect you as a business owner because you know that you're affecting somebody's you know way of life they're, you're putting stress on their families you because you, they're a small business you know their wife their children you don't want to change their personal circumstances and it's and it is a difficult business decision it's one that i hope that you'd never have to make but sometimes it's just not right for, you know it's not right for the business and you, you've got to stand up and, and get that done and yeah yeah, in my, my introduction to you, though, and I said about how your engineers, they've put their hearts into it, don't they? So when you're putting your heart and soul into a business because you're aligned with its vision, mission, values. So for those on startup that perhaps don't know what what's the importance of vision, mission, values, a vision is why you're in business. A mission is what you do differently or what you're going to achieve to, to bring difference to the market and the values of your code of conduct. And once you've got that, we call it the DNA. Once you've got that DNA, it ripples out of everything you say and do. So it's massive you have to get it right and Craig's <clears throat> excuse me got it right in that he can tell when somebody's obviously a good employee they are they're doing their thing but they are an employee they're not a team member they're an employee they're putting their mind and body into their work but they're not um, bringing their heart and soul because it doesn't align with them and there's nothing wrong is the Craig with that that it doesn't align it's just that there's going to be a better right. fit elsewhere yeah, you know when you've got a good engineer when they're phoning you up at nine o'clock at night and they start talking about a new burner man come out. Because you're like, this guy's actually interested in his job, you know. So if you've got a good apprentice and then you can have the other end, is you know, well, how come you've decided to come and work for me? Oh, my dad told me to come and work here, you know. It's that's, <laughs> there's, there's two types of... Some people, you know, want to go to work just to earn the money and they're not really particularly interested in what they do. But to get them, those people aligned and to have the right values... Which should really come naturally, you know. If you if you've if you've hired correctly, um, <clears throat> and you've and you've got it right, then they will have the values you were looking for automatically. You know, it should be those installed in their upbringing really and, and who they are as a person. And one of the things you did about setting up Fairburn was at the age of 24, you saw a load of guys who had taught you your trade effectively be made redundant as they moved production to Holland and whatever. And you didn't like that, I understand. But can you tell a story of how you've perhaps been like those guys were to you that, that before production was moved to Holland, that you've been like that to a younger cohort um, coming through the, and perhaps somebody you're particularly proud of the journey that they've they've made? Um, one that instantly springs to mind, and if any of my engineers are watching this, they'll be like, yeah, it's because he's your favourite. But all my engineers <laughs> are my favourites. They're all brilliant guys. They are, you know, they're, they're all individual characters, but all the guys I've got now are absolutely fantastic, you know, and other companies go, how do you get your guys to work like that? And I'm like, that comes from, like, leadership, not management. You just have to... I always say that's why I'm over here, you know, with one of my engineers. I always... would. I've never asked them to do what I, I wouldn't do myself. I've done that work, I, you know, I, won't, I know we work 
strange hours sometimes, long hours, weekends, uh, get up at three o'clock in the morning to go to a breakdown on a bakery or whatever. Um, but yeah, Sean, who works for me, he's, he's now my senior engineer. He um, got uh, made, he, he left through mutual agreement, shall we say, from uh, DHL as a, a forklift truck driver from having a bit of an argument with his, his superior there. Got to meet the guy. And I just said, look, come, come and work for us for a couple of days. We were working up at MG Rover at, uh, at Longbridge at the time. Um, and I, I, he was with us for a couple of weeks. I thought, well, this guy's got something. I could tell that he's got the right values. And he's, he came from a background where he, he's pretty much orphaned as well. His, his dad had had a heart attack. His mom also had passed away. So he didn't really have much family background. And uh, he was living with his nan, but then his nan passed away. It was a, quite a sob story, really. But he's, he's a really sort of solid bloke. Um, mm. So in the end, I put him through his gas qualifications, and he is the guy that's with me here at the moment. Um, and his loyalty, you know, he is, if you chopped him in half, he's got Fairburn written through him. You know, so, sometimes he's almost, I think, you're more loyal than I am to my own company. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, he'll, and he, he's, uh, he, relo- he, he always says to me, look, you gave me a chance. And, and I was like, yeah, but, you, but you've proved it to yourself. You know, you've made it on your own. He went, no, I wouldn't have done that without you. I'd have, I'd have gone the- up- what did you see in him? That's really interesting. How did you see him? He's a, a nice person, and he's got so, like sort of solid, good loyalty values. And you know, mm. like the, and he didn't make unnecessary promises. He didn't, you know, it was like oh, you know, he thanked me for it, and he was like, "I will prove, you know, I'll prove to you that I'm going to do this." And a lot of people say, "Yeah, you know, I'll give you my all, and I promise you, we're going to do this." And then, you know, then they just mm. get bored of the job or whatever. And you know, people want to move on. You, Mm-hmm. You, can't, you can't expect a stagnant and you don't want a stagnant pool you do need fresh talent to come through businesses don't you as well mm-hmm. so that's important you don't want it flowing too fast but you also don't want a stagnant pool as such but you know it is important i think to have some of the some of the core brain water in that pond isn't it so do you remember well, the art gallery the art gallery anomaly that you ha- you open an art gallery and you've got say 20 paintings up and say uh five self 10 cell or something like that isn't it and yeah. then what do you replace it you leave the ones that haven't sold you leave them up don't you and you put new ones in and i think the analogy from that is sometimes you do need to clear out your art gallery yeah, yeah, but you know, but you've got to still keep the art gallery open. That's it. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now you've talked quite a bit about um, the thrill of helping people. You love being that hero. You love being um, that leader that um, gives people great breaks and chances for them to build their own career. And to, I love how you say you want them to to get rich from um, whatever you can give them. You want them to get from Fairburn. That really is your genuine intention, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. If, if they're genuinely loyal to us, I want them to live the best life that they can with me. And that riches as well. I don't want to start sounding like Bob Marley here, but riches doesn't, you know, they, don't, they don't just come from money, do they? In fact, very, uh, very rarely do riches come from money. They, you know, it's, it's happiness, it's enjoyment of work, it's great home life, work life balance. It's, you know, building teams and enjoying experiences, isn't it? Rather than the money side of it, if, if that's there, it helps. You know, nobody wants to be on the poverty line but it's 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 never really initially i think you could start a business and it's a great driver but you know i'm, I'm not and i'm no self-confessed millionaire i'm far from it you know the, the first million is very hard to come by because i'm not there yet and <laughs> but hopefully i'll be there just before uh, yeah but you do but share with people you do enjoy your money don't you as in i think it's time to to mention your motorcycling career hmm? oh, wow yeah <laughs> my two-year motorcycling yeah Still going strong at 41, yes. That's the one thing I started late, but uh, yeah, the, the black gold is expensive, as I call it. The, the tyres are... Is, is How, much is a How much is a tyre? How much is a tyre? A set of tyres for that bike, four hundred, about £400 fitted. Two tyres, obviously. It's a motorbike. Right, okay, say no more. And people, if you're not knowing what we're on about, obviously, uh, Craig is a competitive motorcyclist, so he has gone round which track at what speed, please, Craig? Um, anyway, I, I started doing uh, on the road and then stopped riding on the road because it's dangerous. Started doing some track days uh, and then got involved in doing some European track days. So that became a bit of a hobby to go to different circuits around Europe. So I've been to Brno uh, in the Czech Republic. That was our first one, which we actually drove to, shipped the bikes home and, and drove there. I've uh, been to Mugello in Italy. That's a really And your fast. top speed? About 194. Oh, and the top speed that you've come off? 
Last crash, yeah, and round three of the uh, endurance. I was competing this year in the um, Pirelli uh, Club 1000, no limits endurance racing uh, at Cadwell Park. I got uh, a bit blindsided and hit by a bike on my uh, my left hand side, and it took me straight onto the grass at 120 mile an hour and actually See burst my I burst my airbag vest, so which they actually ran and compensated me for whilst I was here. So. Yeah. So if we, if we talk about two themes that have come out of that, then is the fear one, which we'll return to. But the, the first one, I think, is the one about um, the money. And one of your favourite books is The Damage Done, is it not? Yes. Yeah, which Tell us about that book. But, but um, it's quite an interesting book about a, a guy who basically gets um, banged up in Thailand for, uh, for smuggling drugs. Uh, and he, you know, he gets more and more cocky and more and more excited about the idea of, of, of doing what he does. Uh, and eventually it gets caught. Um, and it is just, it's, it's got like a stark reminder that, you know, you can't make money fast. Just, you know, make a bit, put it away, be sensible, never lose sight of the bottom line. That's another one that I, even just from the last year, I, for too long, I was watching, you know, the, the gross profit, the, sorry, the turnover come down and the, you know, the still trying to carry on with the trainees that I've got. When I knew hand on heart that the trainees weren't going to make it, didn't want to make, you know, didn't want to show them the door. But eventually, you, you, you've got to make that decision but yeah um business gets a license to operate every year and it's given by its customers isn't it that's yes. the key that's the that difference you've got to keep moving forward but uh yeah the, the damage done and i'm i'm quite a slow you know i'm a slow reader and i end up putting you know i'll pick this book up and then i start another book and pick that book up so but the damage done i actually did read in sort of 48 hours i just couldn't put it down i thought it's a uh, it's a great it's a, it's a tale of a guy i'm reading it at the moment and it's a tale of a guy who's doing all right by his own admission he's doing okay and uh but he gets into some bad company and they start to um inveigle him into their drug ring and he ends up trafficking cash and drugs between thailand doesn't he and uh anyway they're on to him fairly soon aren't they craig and the lesson from this for you was yeah, don't, don't sell drugs now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was also about yeah. get rich quick, wasn't it? You yeah, were saying no. Yeah? yeah. There is there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way I've got that staple to my desk. You know, you've got to just, that you can't, yeah, you're not going to get there. Today is the day you need to be happy because who knows, you know, it's the start of the, what is it? Today is the first day of the rest of your life. So I love that expression. Yeah. But it's yeah. true, though, isn't it? So your guy is in Slovakia at the moment. They're in that front line, aren't they? They're, they're directors of first impressions. And they're saying this is what fur burn heating is like to to deal with. And everything they say and everything they do is being watched as people watch you sort out this problem. So it's really yeah. important, isn't it? That... working on behalf of a burner manufacturer in the UK. But I do get a sense of pride of that we're sort of ambassadors for most of the UK burner manufacturers will use us so if they're, they're happy and comfortable to send us anywhere knowing that we can you know work for them and be ambassadors for their organization so yeah, I, I, yeah. I like the fact that we're trusted in, in that respect in the industry not just with our customers but the the, the manufacturers are also customers of ours so. but the point is if you're happy you're going to reflect that happiness as part of the yeah. Fairburn team, aren't you? You're going to reflect that. People are going to buy into that and say, get those Fairburn guys in. They're nice to have around. They're, you know, really fun guys or they, they just make such light work. Oh, that last guy that came in, he made real heavy weather of it. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, that sort of thing, isn't it, that you want to be known for? One of the things that we haven't dropped and, and we are documenting, but we... Um, we were doing a lot of like performance development reviews and statistics on engineers and it and actually just created a bit of envy and sort of league tableness between them. And there's the wrong sort of corporate attitude for a small business for us. Cause now I can go back out on site cause I'm getting bored in the office as well. And I'm thinking I don't, I can't be in, you know, be in this office. What do I actually like? So I've just gone right back to the beginning. I'm like, I like pipe fitting. I like going out I like meeting people. I like to see, I can still be the MD, but there's so many things you can actually do without having to have that structured office chat. You know, I'm chatting to my engineers about how they feel at work, how they feel at home, what, what would make them feel happier. You can get all that sort of development appraisal work done on a much more regular basis and just yeah. in a more informal sense. So yeah, it's take some of the corporate world, but you know, don't, take too much of it I don't think when you're small because some of it just doesn't fit 
Well, so, and as you say, you're not good with authority. You're you're glad that you've gone out and done things yourself because um, you, you're a master, as it were. But also that flexibility that it enables you to. I'm going to go and do a bit of pipe fitting. I fancy a bit of pipe fitting. I'll go and do a bit of pipe fitting. And also, no doubt, your track days you can choose. No, actually, on Thursday I will not be in the office because I'm going to go off and throw myself around a racetrack at 195 miles an hour. If Boris says it's okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he says it's okay. So that's some of the um, the thrills. Let's talk about the spills now. Um, so when it doesn't go so well, and one of the books you've chosen, we asked um, Craig to say his top three books was The Chimp Paradox, wasn't it? The Chimp Paradox. You, I'm going to leave you to say the third one, Craig. Anyway, if you're allowed to. You about this before. Yes. What should no, we replace this no, with? No, no, no. They're all adults, I'm sure, on this. So there we go. Interesting titles, people. Oh, buckle up for the last one. Anyway. Going back to the um, the chimp paradox, this is by Dr. Steve Peters, who was intrinsic in getting British Cycling all its medals because um, they were actually I was listening to Chris Boardman the other day on Desert Island Discs and he didn't mention Brailsford. So I think he came afterwards with Chris Hoy and whatever. But he's also been involved with loads of other uh, sporting um, achievements. Craig, why do you love the, the chimp paradox so much? Because it's almost like a. It is a light bulb moment, uh, and I know that through um, through listed, I've been to see Steve Peters twice. I really, really enjoy his show. He takes neuroscience and he just makes it really, really simple to understand. You know, you 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 have an irrational mind which he calls the chimp, and then you have uh, your rational mind, which is the human, uh, which is two blood supplies that come straight into the brain, and then the chimp. You then have a, a memory bank, which is your computer. Uh, and then the book then goes on to, to talk about sort of life stones, which are the things which are embedded in the computer. So it's about taking away um, negative thoughts and negative uh, situations. And, and so when the so when the chimp does go to the computer, he goes he goes there first. He, he pushes the rational brain out of the way because the irrational brain works five times quicker than the rational brain. So the irrational works five times quicker than the the, the rational brain. But when the chimp goes to that computer, if he then gets some positive information, then your irrational brain will calm down. And it, it is just a blood supply thing. Um, and, it, and it makes perfect sense because when you start to feel yourself get heated and everything, that's, that's the chimp going to the computer and he's got the wrong answer. So you have to work on, on reprogramming uh, the computer and eventually you'll get back to your life stones, which then means that you know, the computer's fresh and those are almost like good values and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's really good. So it, it, the, the first part is is obviously understanding when you're in. The, 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 where, as soon as you can recognise when you're in irrational mode, then you calm down quicker um, because at least you're, you're saying to the gym, "Look, I know you're in control now." So you, and you can't you can't control the gym because it makes it worse. It's like saying, "I'll only have one piece of chocolate." The, the gym goes, "No, you won't. You'll eat the whole bar." You know or. <laughs> And the more you try and tell the chimp no away, he's like, well, what's this? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's what mm -hmm. but, yeah. And every night I've been over here, I've been eating a bar of milk, thinking you won again, chimp. You know? <laughs> There's going to be a few more pans going around on that bike when you get back on it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been a simple process. He's, he's made it fun. Um, and when you can understand how to sort of control the rational thoughts and try and, and work on your computer, um, you know, it's, to uh, trip it's it that's what I took out I love how you've explained it because you've made me see it slightly differently but I, I was th th think about um, the computer trips your 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 monkey up because you, as you say when you touch something and it's hot and you quickly withdraw your hand that's your chimp isn't it helping you it's saving your life it's kept you alive all these years but we need it's it's not our friend that's why you know it's a paradox it's our uh, biggest friend because it's kept us alive all these years but it's also our worst enemy when we get up to speak to 2,000 people and our hearts going boom, buddy, boom, buddy, boom, buddy, boom, isn't it? So I think just finishing off on the um, chimp paradox, that's been material, has it then? In um, what would you say in terms of how it helps you um, deal with spills, the spills of business? What else perhaps helps you with that? Um, yeah, it's it is just sort of bringing yourself back down, understanding, you know, understanding the outcomes that you're looking for. So, you know, just go, yeah, this isn't going to be a nice experience, but this is, you know, but I know um, at the end of it, it will be. It's the same as sort of forcing yourself to exercise at stupid o'clock in the morning. You know, you don't focus on the fact you're going to go for a stupid run or whatever at five o'clock. You focus on the fact afterwards it feels okay. Because if you ever thought, 
I, you know, let's go, I can get on the running machine. You'd never do it. You've got to push it towards the, you know, it's the outcome you've got to look at. So, but you keep the, your eye on the prize, don't you? That's what you're doing yeah. there. You're keeping your eye on the prize. Yeah. Um, and what would you say in terms of um, the emotion, emotional control? Because you're quite an emotional guy, aren't you, Craig? So how do you, uh, how would you say you you keep a grip of that that you don't you're not impulsive and you know just like rip. <laughs> <laughs> buckle up, can, he's coming through. You can read the book, yeah. No, um, you can read the book, but you don't have to. You, you, it's just nice to have it there to remind yourself, but it's still a work in progress. With you. There oh, are a lot more rational people than, than me. I can tell you that. <laughs> and, and let's play the human game. Do you remember? There's the chimp, the the um, the computer, and there's the human. And everybody, if you want a good party game, I think this is a great game. Three words that in your best dreams your friends would describe you as. Go on, Craig. Three uh, words. I know it's a tough well, one to to land up. We haven't prepared for this, but I I think you can tell people this hasn't been that um, micromanaged. What are the three words that you would love your best friends in your best dreams to describe you as? Uh, funny, loyal and caring. Those are great. Right. Now on to your third book. Off you mm-hmm. go. <laughs> Off you book go. By Mark, book by Mark Manson. Uh, and it's called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a French Connection. <laughs> 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 oh, so elegantly put. Uh, the subtle art of not giving one. Go on. What did you uh, get from this? Uh, uh, the first few chapters, because the the F word is like it's in there like so many times, and it just makes you giggle because it's going about F this and F that. And when you're, a, you know, when you're a, a four year old, um, um, basically the, the book is around the fact that uh, people are, people sometimes are too positive, and it's a false positive talk about false positives but yeah <laughs> you don't hmm. the world the world's not necessarily a nice place and sometimes it, it sucks basically and you've got to choose your battles and understand you know you've only got a certain amount of f's to give yeah. uh, and, when, and when you're young you've got you've got a lot of you know you haven't got any, a lot of other stuff going on so if your mom says put your red shorts on and you want to wear your blue shorts that's a major issue for you and you, you know you start to give a massive f about it uh, likewise, it says in the book that, you know, if you're an 80 year old woman and you've been saving up coupons for, you know, for, for a year and then you go to the shop and find out they're, um, they're all out of date and you can't spend them. That's another major thing that you'll give an F about. But in between those two bands, there's a lot of stuff that's going to come up that you don't like. And sometimes you just got to say it. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> Move on. Just fly on. Yeah, it's, it's I love the guy's style. You know, it, again, he, he tells a lot about his life stories and there's there's you know, people that have he's lost from suicide and all sorts of things um, that mm. have sculpted his life. But yeah, Mark Manson is a, is a great author. There's a lot of sort of 15 minute reads that he does as well on his website. And thoroughly You'd recommend them. Recommend and, them with an and, and just pick your battles. You know, you can't win them all. Yes. Avik has got a good expression for it. He says, choose um, which ditch to die in and don't die in every ditch, which I think is perhaps trench warfare, um, whatever. But there we go. Going back to the um, the spills, what, what would you, I'd like you to be, well, I know these hurt, but do you want to share your lowest point? Um, because I think that's good for people to understand that business can ring you out, can't it? Yeah. It's tough. It's what makes us what we are, I suppose. One of the lowest points, um, was when the, uh, the 2008 recession and we'd taken on our first two engineers. Uh, we had a £40,000 overdraft at the time. And on the Monday, uh, we were £40,000 overdrawn from paying their wages because we simply didn't have the work and we were waiting on some money to come in from Honda. Uh, and it was 11th hour. Uh, and I was thinking, I've got to wake up in the morning and tell these guys I can't pay their wages. And, and the money did come in on the Tuesday morning, but I had zero sleep. Uh, and it just it's a stark reminder that you could be as friendly as you like but the, the business needs like you say you need to have that cash there and we were at probably the most critical point there I mean in reality I could have gone to the bank but in my eyes I thought we're a, we're a small startup I've borrowed 40,000 pounds and I've spent it paying people and that's that's a silly thing to do you know you have to you have to you know you have, to, you have to lose these people a lot quicker don't you you know if uh, if, if that's the situation that you're in but we bounced back from that and the, the following year uh, which is a com- complete opposite um, because all of these big factories have been saving their capex uh, I found myself lying to my partners that we both leave for work at the same time 
I'd drive a mile and come back home and just stare at a wall because we had too much work. Um, and I was just thinking, I, I've never gone through that rapid amount of you know, recruitment and trying to find good, not just people, but good people to work at BMW and Jaguar and everywhere else. I was thinking, how are we going to do this? You know, and how on earth? And that year, we, we doubled in size. We went from a, a £500,000 turnover to a million pounds in one year. Oof. We were using contractors and, and everything else. And, uh, and, just, to, and just explain to people what sort of growing pains that induces, please. It's just that you don't know, you're hoping you've got the right people on board, but you think, have I, have I got people in on a, on a rush? And then you've got subcontractors who, with all the best will in the world, if you employ a subcontractor on day rate, he's going to be there until you tell him to go home. So then you need people to manage those people. And uh, yeah, have I made the right decisions? Have I taken on this much work and I'm going to do it at a loss? So it's going to finish me. It's, uh, you really can't get focused and, and then the debilitation of not being able to sort it out, you know, because you've got so much pressure on. It's it's the first time you come under a lot of pressure in a business, but you know, the the world the world, you know, life is problems, you know. You can't try you can't get rid of all your problems. Life is, you know, you've got to in, in, hmm. embrace you've got to embrace your problems, haven't you? And then deal with them because you'll have problems throughout your life. You can't just have a list of ten and they go away because the next day you wake up with eleven or twelve. So deal with them, enjoy, you know, sort of enjoy the problem solving side of business and just do one at a time. Um, don't try and get them all done at once and let your brain go everywhere because your brain will, you know, it will shut down. And that's the one time I think I've had, actually had stress. And it, really? The, and how that, did it affect you, Craig? It makes you, it stops you thinking. You can't work, you can't operate, you, you're just completely debilitated. You know, you, you, you mm. can't go, you find yourself not able to, um, you, you talk to your partner at the, and, but you're not really opening up fully about what's going on. Uh, you feel isolated, you, you know, and you just need to get the knot out of your chest. But the only way of doing it is to take the big deep breath and go and solve one problem, you know. But you also meditate, don't you? Don't you? Um, well, not me what's your of, form? Uh, what's your uh, form of sorting your head out? Uh, at the moment, I've been, well, just before lockdown, I've been doing some Iyengar yoga. Uh, which is really great. There's the, the lady that does that, Nikki Vesper, she's um, running a, a male only class now on a, on a Wednesday, which is full of old men like me. It's, I, actually, I actually like it because I'm the youngest there and the most flexible. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like top of the class. She makes me stand on my head for the longest, you know, whilst these other men moan about their kid. That's uh, interesting. Why did she decide to do men only? Um, I just think it works, works better, really, mm -hmm. because and the other thing that she. <laughs> They're different muscle groups, aren't they? A lot of men have got tight mm. hamstrings and they've got tight yeah. backs. And, um, yeah, yeah. I've not, done it for 30 not, years and I've always been part of a, an all-female group. And yeah. men have come in and they've not lasted. Don't ask what goes on. Anyway, but just to say that it's, it's interesting, isn't it, that it's something that's got a bit of a gender divide, but you found great, um, not solace, but um it's it's work for you sort of st we we stretch our bodies to get into our minds don't we and do you find that after a session it, it changes you you're a lot more relaxed but there's there's a, a video uh, on youtube with a, one of, it's a buddhist monk and he talks about the monkey brain it's only a short clip as well i recommend watching that but he, he also says the, you know the monkey brains going yada, 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 yada. and he was like and you can't fix that by giving him a banana but people think that you have to meditate for hours but actually it's just taking stock and saying breathe you know notice mm. that you're going to take mm. one breath just one breath anywhere is meditation and we all you know when you do it you think right let's go and do this or whatever take a deep breath it, yeah take a couple of deep breaths and be in control of your breathing rather than just letting your body do you know breathe at whatever rate it wants but most yes. cycle racing is very much like that because if you're not concentrating on just that apex or that speed then you, you know you can't have all that clutter in your brain so again sounds weird going fast on bikes but it is actually a form of relaxation and meditation for me because you can only think of two things you know totally breaking. understand that yeah, yeah. You, you've <laughs> got to be in flow haven't you it's absolute concentration and janine yeah. asks which books do you turn to in times of trouble to reset and uh reframe and it, she's saying not necessarily a business book um one of the best, it's not necessarily a book, but uh, I'm, I'm quite into obviously di digital reading of all sorts of the social media. And if I want to reset, I'll just turn on my social media off. That's probably the one thing I would say. Um, Why? Why does social get you? 
Because it's one person's opinion. And one of the things that I've learned from the a, a sort of a Buddhist way is that you, you, you can only, see, if you only see things with, you, you can only believe what you see with your own eyes in real time. And the rest of any bits of any information from anywhere else, it's just somebody else's opinion. Um, so you can't get drawn in. And but you, you do get, naturally, everybody gets drawn in by, oh, I read this, I read that. And the way that the media is, the, is in this day and age, you know, the, the mainstream media isn't the 10 o'clock news, is it? It's, it's your Instagram, it's your, it's your Facebook, it's the stuff that's in your face all the time. So, yeah. Okay. Um, We've got another, uh, not so much a question, but Georgina says, ouch, £40,000 overdraft. But I would think that that would be quite worrying, but I think you may have had other worries than that. I don't want to focus too much on the negative, but if we could say perhaps three mistakes that you've made that you've learned from, I, I don't know, how, how would you like to address this, Craig? Um, so number one, like I said before, you've got to hire slow and fire fast. Um, number hire, two, take your time, take your take time, time getting to know somebody yeah. before you hire them. And then as soon as you feel Mm -mm, you're not going to cut it here this is it doesn't fit right say so bye bye it's how many people um actually show their colors when you you know offer people uh, a three-month contract you know bring them in for sort of or just bring them in for you know a day's work and things like that because sometimes people settle in within two weeks and then they change from the interview because i mean anyone can get through an interview um mm. yeah people can change a lot quicker than you think you know yes <laughs> Don't, 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 you weren't you know, like this in your interview. No, no, yeah. And don't feel, um, don't feel that you're holding anybody back by saying, you know, we'll have a review in, in six months' time. It doesn't have to be three months. You can stay, well, you know, it's a six-month thing or, or something like that. Um, borrowing money is something that I never wanted to do. I've always tried to run the business in the black. Uh, but at the moment, with the way that rates are, it's not so much an issue and with the, the loans and everything else, I, you know, we are going to get hit at some point with, with, with paying these things back, but the banks are giving money away at the moment. So it's never a better time to sort of think a little bit mm. bigger than, you know, don't rush in, like I say, you don't grow your business fast, but um, there's support, there's a lot of support out there at the moment. You know, we've had a, a lot of assistance and the, even with the furlough scheme, we can run our engineers at 100% efficient at the moment because we can claim back the hours that they're not working, whereas we try and target sort of 80% efficiency for our engineers. That, that's good for, for good bottom line. At the moment, you know, they're mm -hmm. saying if our engineers aren't working 40 to 50 hours a week that they're contracted, then they're going to top it up for us. So, But that's you know. absolutely what the furlough scheme is about, isn't it? Preserving yeah. those jobs so that when things do pick up, which people are saying that's going to be spring or autumn next year, whatever, they're, they're there and they're ready to go rather than you put them on, you know, out to pasture, as it were. So that's yeah. absolutely what it's about. Sorry, go well, on. You were saying okay, slow. Sorry, yeah, I was just going to say with, with regards to borrowing money as well, there's other people that I've met who will remain nameless uh, through, through the Vistage group, but they, you know, his, his attitude and I think you probably know what I'm talking about but I won't mention his name but he's sort of like what's the worst that can happen what they're going to do you know what I mean they, they'll come and you start again they'll do this and he's sort of blase borrow it borrow it borrow it you know take it and do good stuff with it if you're a sensible person and you want to use mm -hmm. it for the reasons then take it you know that's um, it. Get out there and make it happen. Those ambitions that you thought, oh, if I had a spare few grand around, I'd have done this. You've got that yeah. now that the government's giving you interest free rates, as it were, for 12 months. But remember, you've got to pay it back in 12 months time. Yeah. Uh, from Joanne, you mentioned mission, vision, values, the, the how and the why. How do you know to, you've got them right? Do you need to have them clear in your mind when you start up or can you define them along the way? Good question, Joanne. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, define them all the time and review them all the time. Um, how did you know? Joanne's question is, how do you know when they're right? Um, because it's a you tough want, one, isn't it? It, could, uh, it should be easy to say to the right person, hey, come and follow me. This is where we're going. And they uh -huh. go, yeah. And you know that they're, not, then they're coming for the right reason. You know, they're, 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 they're naturally drawn to the cause. And that's how you know you've got the right things on board and, and it's what's important to you really and mm. you'll know when you want to set up your organization what you'd expect from somebody and what you want and, and it's down to you to obviously to set those those the, those values and and then what journey do you want to go on you know somebody once said to me as well he's, he was quite a hard businessman but the most important thing in business is to plan your exit you know mm. it was like from day one where you know this is a journey what when do you want to get off 
and you work towards that model and you keep resetting that model you know this is and that's where you get your three-year plan and your five-year plan um can you remember the name of the guy who did the three the five one three five plan pete wilkinson. wilkinson pete wilkinson yeah really highly energetic uh macker wasn't he from sunderland but that's it again, yeah I found that really empowering to do. You know, you, you set out your vision, you put your three mm. core objectives, and then you list five tasks underneath each, each, each core objective. Um, and it works. You know, I, I achieved every one of those things that I wanted to do in that time frame. Um, and then you sort of, you can reset then. So the business will be in a certain position. So, you know, yeah, definitely. So, so, so that's one of the mistakes. Yeah, yeah, sorry, turnover, turnover will. Yeah, Go no, on. Turn, yeah, turn over the, you know, play the field. Don't just sit on, on stagnant visions and missions and values and don't be afraid to change them if the company starts going in a different direction or you're not happy with the, the journey that it hasn't gone the way you wanted it to go, you know. Have a, have a stand back and have a reset. But let's look at that fear of failure in terms of, so you have a reset, a control out Dell of the company. Yeah. <clears throat> How do you sort of say, oh, well, you know, it's quite hard to let go of this because this is such a firm, solid, profit generating base. I'm, going, I'm now going to launch us into the unknown. Yeah, I'll tell you when I do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah, um, but uh, I suppose you're always marketing, are you, to people? You're taking existing products to new markets. You're never starting a new service or product in a new market as Ansoff models. If you want to know about Ansoff, it's in the library. Anyway, but he uh, talks about, you know, that your, your strong suit is selling the existing services to your existing customers. And that's the easiest way, isn't it, to get a sale. But uh, you, you measure your risk, do you? I want you to talk a little about risk and how you use fear to fuel you um, do we measure risk how do you measure risk that's a tricky question i don't know if we mm. again maybe it's sort of instinctual you know what's you know what feels right you know you, you, you do have to trust your gut when you go into some meetings and you think is this right for us is you know and, and don't be afraid to walk away you know or say this mm. isn't right for us it doesn't as long as you're up front with that person it's only going to be an awkward five minutes to get out of a room saying that that's not for us or you're not for us or yeah just saying sometimes it's all right to say no mm. you know? takes courage sometimes <laughs> to say no yeah 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 but also you you you, also, you you seem to run towards fear as in not just the motorcycling sort of thing but you do stretch yourself don't you and you don't mind you're so confident that you're going to pull yourself through whatever um you, you, you you're in and it's worked hasn't it, it, it yeah fortune favors the brave isn't it i say as they say so yeah and by the way um what's the worst that's going to happen yeah, yeah, well, yes, I like Throw that. What, brand, no. <laughs> is that in a book? Is that in a book? What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Not that I oh, know. Anonymous <laughs> says, never ask anyone to do what you wouldn't do yourself. A great approach. Thank you, Craig. This is all sound advice. See, you're reaching people, Craig. They, they, they are valuing what you're saying. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So the last of your mistakes, we've got the the higher, uh, don't ask me about that recruitment thing that you can sit with people for hours and you think, yes, I'm making a stand decision, but fire fast when they show that they're, they're not the people that they presented at the interview. The thing about borrowing money, what would be your top third mistake that you've learned from? Top mistake. Tricky. Or would it be okay. the biggest lesson? Would it be the biggest lesson? I can't remember what was, uh, where I was going that one. Um, biggest lesson. What's it? Who or who do you, who is your greatest mentor? Perhaps who do you really admire? And when they say something or do something, you very much listen to what they're saying or doing. Probably my wife at the moment. But it, at the moment, I say <laughs> she is going to be my wife. For, there's a <laughs> told her not to listen. <laughs> um, no, she, she's very much the opposite of me in the yin and yang part of that work. So I guess just to take stock and just to, you know, like I say, take a breath, walk away from situations, have a think about things, you know. I am the impulsive one, but it's also good to have that person to go, you know, let, let that person have a think about that. Don't write that email tonight or write it, get it off your chest so you don't take it to bed and then you know, reread it in the morning and take out the salient points and put across what you want to say when the chimps calm down or, 
Yeah, it's a really important lesson, isn't it, to go to sleep on something. Don't make a decision there and then. No. Buy yourself um, time and say, you know, things like, um, what's his name, Don Draper from Mad Men saying, uh, thank you for your thoughts. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated or <laughs> whatever. You know, you, you, we, we don't have to answer people there and then. And I love that red envelope system where you say to people in your company meeting, if you've got a question, pop your question in the red envelope so they can write it anonymously or obviously type it out, but you, you're not asking for who's asking the question. And then you open that as their leader, you open that envelope in the meeting and you share what the question is, but there's no pressure on you to come back there and then to answer it. You can say, I'll tell you next month sort of thing. Sometimes we tr we're trying to be too amenable, don't we? Because we, we're so um, wrapped up in service culture and serving our teams. Yeah, and, the, and email was never designed to be answered straight away and uh, going back to my home life my wife actually took three days to, uh, to say that she'd marry me when I asked her to marry me so she's got no problem with it you know sorry uh, say that a bit again I asked, Craig I said I asked Dee to when I asked Dee to marry me she took three days to give me an answer yes <laughs> yeah don't blame her yeah, it's not a big decision. I'll think about it, you know. Like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rather than, oh, I'm so in love. It's different when you're, yeah. she was in her 30s, wasn't she? It's different when you're in your 30s. You've got more of an idea. You're not this flippity gibbet that's, anyway, moving on. That's well, going a bit off. Yeah. Yeah, a bit going off um, business um, a little bit. But I think this thing about putting your big pants on and being the hero <laughs> to people, I, tot I totally get that. And do you think you're, it's a drug, isn't it, of a sort? Do you think you'll ever well, be able to wean yourself off that drug? You know, making people happy. Now I've got the, the right team around me and I'm keeping it small. Um, I, I did, like I say, I went off, you know, whoever mentioned the £40,000 borrowings from the bank, I've, I've probably spent, five times that on trainees that we don't we no longer have anymore so um you know you've got to like i say knit things in the bud um when uh, and yeah never what i was going to say never um never sleep you know it's like you say never sleep on a, on a full head do you so and you know going off tangent a little bit here but no, no, that's fine. Yeah. We've got 10 minutes. Well, eight minutes, but it doesn't matter. We want to wrap up in terms of if there are any more questions. Please post your questions in, people, if you've got um, any more. We've got a, a few more minutes before we um, wrap up. But just to say that whole thing about the, the freedom of having your own business and when it's going well, oh, my word, there is no other feeling is there like it in the world. <laughs> um, and that's what we wanted to get across uh, today, didn't we, Craig, that it, it's full of you, you really live life to the fullest I think when you take responsibility for your own life and that's the ultimate really in terms of either creating a new life and having a child but also um, Martin Sorrell who ran the biggest agency in the world for quite a while WPP um, he said that a man's closest creative achievement to having a child would be owning a business would you agree with that Craig? <laughs> Yeah, he says, well, well speaking of today is cheap tomorrow. That's what I keep getting told by my dad. Say again, say again, what's Craig. Expensive today is cheap tomorrow. You know, so what's that? Go on, expand on that. If you say, oh, I don't know if I want to buy that, it's too expensive, and he'd be like, it'll be cheap in 10 years' time. So, oh, right, yeah, yeah, true enough with regards to where the money goes and things like that. Okay. Anyway, so in terms of these books, is there anything else you'd like to, on oh, what the, yeah, don't give a, and also uh, the damage done and uh, the chimp paradox? Is there anything else that you think, oh, I haven't covered that, that I'd just like to share? No, just, you know, I think if you're, if you're genuine and sincere, then, you know, the customers, will come to you don't try and be you know the false positive because some you know everybody has bad days some days when you start your own business you might want you know you might not want to get out of bed that day the nine to five's gone don't feel like you've got to go to the office all the time you know you can answer your emails on your phone and, um but remember actually it, off as well yeah uh, you know. Go into that a little more because lots of people are struggling with their mental health at the moment. And mm. obviously, um, you've got the glorious problem of being so busy that you don't know which way to turn. But when you've been um, uh, quiet and you've thought about your own mental health and you've been a bit down, what, what would be the top things that you'd say to somebody? Do this, that, the other. Um, exercise, number one. There's, there's there's no answer in you know it, alcohol's a depressant 
um, I drink way too much, but <laughs> but I try not to. You know, you have to drink for happiness, not to get through anything. Um, so yeah, the main one for me is to exercise the clarity from, like I say, from a walk or from a run or from a cycle or a swim. You'll get all your best ideas by giving yourself that brain space. You know, step away from what you're doing in the day to day and and let your rational come back to, to you know come back into interview. Um, what would you say is your master stroke? If you could say, if there's one good thing that I've done, what would you say is your master stroke? Treat customers how you'd expect to be treated. And, you know, I, I always said the one, it's a weird um, analogy that I say to our guys, but if you walk into a contractor's toilet and the sink is a mess, clean it. You know, I just leave everything much better than you found it. Because... Uh, and I just I always do that you know I'm the MD and I walk into any toilet in any horrible site we were working at Thames Water last week you know on a, on a sludge plant and um, power generator and the toilet but not because it was at a sewage plant but it, the contractor's toilet was an absolute mess and I, and I clean it you know I don't oh see god it bless you Craig Carr <laughs> Why you not? cleaned it what with your own bare tongue what well, <laughs> you know, just put the toilet paper and clean the sinks out and, yeah you know, yeah just make it look you don't want you didn't want to see it like that so yeah nothing yes. wrong with nothing wrong with getting yourself that like i say do do what you you want your staff to do and set the example um, to your staff and, and say this is how i'd like it to be done and if you've got the right people they'll be like yeah i agree with you so, yeah. and for me it's little acts of kindness so the other day i was doing a click and collect at um, tesco and it was a lovely young girl um bringing the stuff i don't have bags so you know i have a little bit of banter with them as i'm sticking the stuff in the bags and into the back of the car and um she said oh no i'm not here i said oh are you part of the cohort that's uh, been brought in for you know this since this pandemic to bring everybody in for um to help out with more uh, a massive rise in click and collect she said um it's just a summer job really before um i go to university oh what you're going to study and she said ecology or something like that and i said have you had work experience and she said uh, no where would i get that for ecology and i said oh the husband works at atkins big engineering group they've got them 10 a penny there you need to you know um get in front of there if you were to apply there um they'd gladly have you for a couple of weeks work experience it'll all be on zoom and everything so you know you're gonna have to um accommodate that and she looked at me as though i'd invented fire she was, I was like thank you so much yeah, i said well it will make a it'll make a big difference when you come to apply for a job if you can say you've got that work experience and whatever as an ecologist it would make a really big difference and i thought how easy was that just to give that little not even advice just chatting to somebody and whatever mm. i bet you craig Carr, are doing that day in day out i just know you and that's what you do it is going to be safe yeah make people happy make people smile it's yeah it is isn't it and you do that how are you doing it in slovakia one story and then we must go and um, by the way everybody's thoroughly enjoyed you so to speak um they they think it's wonderful how we're curating this conversation they don't realize it's just like the pub but we're sober <laughs> <laughs> And Sue says, that was Marion saying it's great. And Sue says, um, uh, hello, really enjoying this. So I'm sorry, people, we have got to wrap it up. Hi, Sue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Craig, come on, give us a story. Give us a story to keep us lifted as you've done in the last hour, that as we go off to finish off the week, finish strong, as we say, as to um, perhaps so, uh, somebody's said, oh, you've done really well there, Fairburn, or a real positive that's made you feel the bee's knees. I just like I say, we, we've we've come to to work on this other, and we've got mismatched voltages, which looks like you know the end of the, the end of the trip. And I think I'm kind of thinking, well, this is good because we can go and have a look at lockdown, Bratislava, or whatever else. But you know, just just pulling all that together for the guys, and and you know, we're we're up at half six. We've been working till sort of six o'clock at night. Uh, instantly, those people are sort of like you know, we've we've got some good people here, and you, and you make friends, and you and that's the way that that grows. Uh, the reputation thing. You don't need to spend massive amounts of money on for what we do on, on marketing and we're a service-based company uh, reputation 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 that's how you will you know and you'll pick up work um, go and Brilliant. see people have a chat have a coffee and be yourself absolutely your authentic self which i can testify yeah. that that's been him this morning the real great car even without in vino veritas or whatever that expression is he's, he's just Live from Slovakia, Jen Queen. <laughs> craig are you happy with everybody linking with you on linkedin if they want to 
by all means, yeah, if I can help anybody out, if they've got any more questions for me, then give us a shout. And uh, when Lovely. I'm sat, sat in my hotel room on my own somewhere in the world, I'll, I'll come back to because <laughs> I'll be lonely. Billy No Mate <laughs> says, oh, somebody's reached out to me on LinkedIn. Yeah, anyway, and all the books that Craig's mentioned as part of this, you can get them through your local library. Anyway, thanks everybody for listening in because it would be horrible to be broadcasting into the void, but I think we're all done there. Thank you ever so much. Thanks, Bye Ange. now. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye-bye.